Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Wasson from creativeguitarstudio.com. Thanks a lot for joining me here on my weekly Andrew Wasson blog on the Andrew Wasson YouTube channel. Uh, first thing I want to do is make some announcements about what the uh, videos were that I posted over on Creative Guitar Studio this week. So if you go over to the Creative Guitar Studio YouTube channel, you're going to be able to watch the three videos that I put up this week. Uh, one's called Play This Two String Lick Every Night for Two Days. It's a great video talking mainly about how you can use two string licks featured in the country western guitar style. I use my Fender Telecaster for that one. I play a really nice piece in there as well. If you're a Patreon member, you're going to get the chart and the MP3 backing track and every, everything for that video. So go check that one out. Uh, the other one that I put up is called Did You Know You Could Do This With An E Chord? <laughs> And I do uh, some pretty cool movements along the neck with the E chord. And I do some pretty cool pieces and concepts about how everything can fit together with that chord on the neck. It's a fun video. It's really easy, especially if you're a beginner. You're going to get a lot out of that one. The handout's on Patreon at any tier level. I call those videos my Friday Patreon Plus because it's for Friday students. And it's all about just getting you guys some extra material to have some fun with over the weekend. Uh, now, speaking of the weekend, at the end of the weekend here on Sunday, I put out my latest video. It's called Beautiful Melodic Solos in Every Key, and it's all about playing solos across the neck. I've got some really good ideas for you about how to use a system that I basically, I think I made it up. I don't know. It's probably something other people use too. I call it scale zones, and it's about taking a scale, like in, in one sense, moving along the neck. I'm just using key of F major here, you know, so I've taken an F note to G to A to B flat, but then around how I set the notes up is I do short scale runs with them. And then I just move up the neck, you know, step by step so that, you know, I can put together a scale run on every step. And then you can use it for creating a lot more balanced and a lot more melodic guitar solos. Anyway, those are the three videos I put up over at Creative Guitar Studio on YouTube. Go check it out. You'll see a link in the description pinned to the top comment. Go and follow the link and you can watch those videos. Now, uh, next thing I want to get into here with this lesson. It's all about eight must know ideas for especially you know, it's tips and, and concepts and you know, tricks that you can use if you're a guitar player who's older especially over 50, but you don't have to be over 50. You could be over 40, over 45. It's going to apply to anybody older. Anybody may be suffering a little bit from arthritis. Anybody may be feeling like, you know, that their shoulder hurts or their back hurts when they play or whatever. And they're kind of get, trying to get into the world of, um, you know, playing guitar, maybe for a second time, maybe you played as a teenager and you're trying to get back Maybe it's just brand new. May, like I've, I've had students even on the channel and even coming into the website who are quite a lot older, 60s, 70s, 80s, even in the, their 90s. You can be quite old and still learn how to play guitar. It only takes a couple years to get everything down in the basics. And then you kind of spend the rest of your life trying to understand what you want to say with it. So let's go through these eight things. I think you're really going to you know, get a kick out of them. Number one all has to do with your hands and being comfortable and i think it's really important when you get older because everybody as they get older you know you use your hands a lot especially depending on the job you have maybe you're a mechanic i taught guitar one time to a guy who's a helicopter mechanic and you know he always had trouble with his hands he was an older gentleman uh he was in his late 60s at the time it was quite a number of years ago but the thing is is your hands can really hurt after a while so uh, my method, because I'm older, you know, I'm in my 50s, and it's about soaking your hands in Epsom salt, really. I find that is making the biggest difference for me. Also, um, if you can get your hands on some, uh, it's called natural magnesium oil spray. I find it really good, it's, especially, I get trouble sometimes with my fretboard hand, mainly in colder months in the weather. I think i got to move away to someplace warmer because I'm getting sick as I get older of living in this climate that I'm in in Canada. It's too cold up here. So anyway, guys, yeah, like Epsom salt soak, nice warm water, even like as hot as water you could handle uh, with lots of Epsom salt in it. And then the other option is that magnesium, natural magnesium oil. Check it out. It's usually really cheap. You can kind of order it from anywhere online. Probably Amazon has it. Uh, iHerb or if you're in Canada, you could use uh, natural nutrition and, you know, some great products out there for that. I find that something about it, it, it helps a lot. Long time ago, I had a family doctor uh, and she had said to me to take magnesium every night before you go to bed. It's really helpful. And I started doing it. And it's rare to find an actual MD that will say, hey, take vitamin D, take vitamin C, 
you know, take some magnesium because usually like medical doctors won't tell you that stuff. You know, just say, take this pill you know, or something or whatever the pill is. Anyway, hand fatigue, hand problems definitely can be helped in that department of soaking your hands, keeping your hands warm. Worst thing you can do, especially in cold winter months is get your hands way too cold. I know it's hard if you live in the colder climates, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. All right. I spent way too long on that one. Let's move on. Uh, number two is all about the fact that you want to stay relaxed when you play. It is, you know, you want to practice as much as possible. It's great to practice, you know, but at the same time, if you practice with a lot of stress, with a lot of um, tension, with a lot of apprehension, because maybe you're not feeling like you're good enough or whatever it may be, that is going to lead to problems. So you want to make sure that when you practice, you stay relaxed and just everything's water off a duck's back. You know, you're like, oh, I didn't play that. Oh, that didn't turn out. Whatever. I'll come back tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be better. So, you know, have that attitude. Water off a duck's back. You know, you're going to get better as long as you keep picking the thing up. Okay. All right. Next one. Uh, start with the one finger chords if you're just getting started into guitar. Uh, the three that I always show students are just E minor, uh, a G major made off the fifth string B note, and then a C major seven, just playing off the C note in the bass and then top three strings. That is a beautiful group of chords. They sound really nice. You could even kind of, you know, pop on them like. I'm just kind of plucking. You can arpeggiate them too. That's a really nice sound. Strumming, just do some basic strumming. These three chords, you get a lot of mileage out of them. They're super easy. You can play them with one finger, your favorite finger, whatever finger that is. Super easy. Okay, so start with something like that, just to get yourself some motivation when you first get into guitar. Number four is all about getting a good quality guitar with thin strings and low action. I'm just using this nylon string here. It's just a basic nylon string. I think I paid about eight or, eight or 900 bucks for it, something like that. Just get a guitar, good quality. Don't buy junk. Like, go, don't, buy, don't, don't go and buy a $35 guitar, okay? Don't go to a garage sale and, and pay 10 bucks for some guitar who knows how long it's been sitting around, maybe the neck's warped or something. Just don't waste time on junk. You know, buy something pretty good. Even in the beginning, if it's only three or 400 bucks or something you spend on a guitar, buy something that's comfortable, sits in your lap easy, easy to press down strings. That's the one nice thing about nylon string guitars. Are, the strings are plastic, super easy to press down on. So, I mean, I started on a guitar like this and I still love playing them. You know, they're, they're great. They sound super, you know, super nice. Okay, so, uh, you know, good guitar, low action, easy to depress, thin strings. If you want, get an electric, but there's more money to get a better one. And you got to buy an amp and you got to buy patch cords and all that stuff. So, I don't know. Nylon string guitar, good quality nylon string guitar is going to go a long way. All right, number five is all about, like, psychology with this. You know, like, you know, keep your psychology in check. Um, doing, like, getting good at guitar takes a long time, man. Like, it's going to take you two years to get the basics, another two years to kind of get to that next plateau. Six years down the road, you're going to start feeling like, I'm fairly comfortable with this thing. It's not too bad. The, like, you have to learn the basics, and then literally you just spend the rest of your life trying to get really good at all this. It takes time. Let the time happen, but hey, pick it up every day if you can. If you can't pick it up every day, pick it up six days a week. If you can't do that, pick it up five days a week. If you get to playing this thing only four days a week, you got a problem. It's getting too little. Three days a week, uh, not good. Uh, two days a week's a joke. You're barely going to be getting any progress happening at all. You've got to play, if you can, every single day. I play every day. I pick this thing up every day. I'm forever puttering around, making things up. Even if my arthritis is kicking in and it hurts or whatever, I still grab the guitar and I still play and practice. So do that. It helps a lot. Okay, number six is all about like ex expanding your knowledge. You've got to get more knowledge. You got to eat it up. You got to get a lot of stuff, man. Like you got to pick up books here, videos there. Go on YouTube. Get, get started with a course. Um, my course is great. I'm kind of, you know, prejudiced on it, of course, because I put it together. But I mean, like put a good solid effort into a program you know so that is a step-by-step -step, chapter by chapter program and it's gonna have to be intensive like it's gonna have to be a lot of stuff 
um, you hear about these people with this, oh, I got my five-step program guitar course, I got my eight-step, my 10-step guitar program, you know, come join me for my 11-step guitar program. There's no way that's enough material. Like, I mean, you need material that's getting up there into like 30, 40 hours of video, 50 hours of video. You've got to get a lot of handouts and you've got to get a lot of material that's focused and goes in a step-by-step -step orderly way. That's the only way this, you're going to learn this thing, man. You can't learn it off of some $35 course that you picked up because some YouTuber who may, maybe played flashy licks said, hey, buy my course, it's the best thing in the world out there, blah, 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 it's worth $3,000, but I'll sell it to you for 35 bucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, there's no way that stuff's gonna work. You're gonna just waste your money. Get involved with a solid guitar program. Maybe videos and YouTube is not your thing. Maybe you gotta find a person and work face-to-face -face with them. Um, my personal belief, by the way, on like Skype, video, like, you know, video conferencing lessons, whatever, it doesn't work. I tried doing it for years. I spent quite a bit of time trying to organize it and do my best to see how it would go. It, to me, it doesn't work. So anyway, uh, number seven, uh, avoid long breaks away from the instrument. Like if you're sick, or you have to go to the hospital and get a, like an operation or something. Um, you know, man, yeah, you're not going to play for a few weeks. But don't like play guitar for a while, get really into it, and then put it down for three months. And then get back into it a bit, and then put it down for two months. And you know, that that's really bad. Get a concept in your brain that that's horrible. You don't want to do that. Remember what I said earlier, play every day. So long breaks, not good. Okay, last last one I have for you. If you can do this, this is kind of like the, the pinnacle, like the icing on the cake. Um, if you can get a, a, like what I call an accelerator gr a group, other people that are learning guitar that are at different levels that you can maybe sit down with once a month at least and talk about guitar. Like say, I got this thing I'm trying to do and I can't do it. You got any suggestions? Hey, what, what about this? Like if you can't do actual guitar lessons like with a, a, an instructor, because I know they're expensive now to do face-to-face -face lessons. If you can't do that, Form an accelerator group somehow. Maybe somebody in the office where you work is starting to get into guitar too. Um, I got a friend of mine starting to get into guitar and he's doing like this thing where there's somebody taking actual lessons and he's doing online lessons and they're going to kind of see along the way who is going to be getting better and how they're going to be doing with, you know, with the work in the two different ways of learning guitar. So that's going to be kind of interesting to hear back from him about how that's going to go. And guess what? He's over 50 as well. <laughs> so anyway, hey, have fun no matter what. Have fun. Music sounds great. Remember those chords I was just talking about? They have one finger. You know, they all sound cool when you line them up. I bet you could make a song with that. I bet you could write some lyrics with something like that. So have fun. Get into this. Play every day. Go through the tips that I had for you. And uh, you're going to get better. It's just going to be that easy. So anyway, thanks a lot for joining me. I look forward to making another uh, week uh, video, next week video for you guys on, uh, on these ideas that I have that I'm throwing around on the Andrew Watson YouTube channel. Otherwise, uh, take care. And uh, until then, keep practicing, keep jamming, keep having fun. And uh, take care of yourself. Uh, make sure you stay on top of your health and your practice because uh, the better that you feel psychologically, the better that you feel physically is going to equate to better guitar playing and probably happier and nicer sounding melodies too. Okay, guys, have a great week. Until next time, take care. All the best and uh, bye for now.